I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is February 18th, 2020. And in this video, I'm going to be, I'm going to be uh, creating Excel files programmatically in Python using the OpenPyXL libraries, uh, which I've been doing recently in some other videos. But in this video, I'll be focusing on setting the column widths and the row heights. Okay, first to help some people out there, um, I've already done an article on this, and here it is on Whiteboard Coder. So it might be easier to go here and pull down some of the code. And also there should be some links to some gist on there. So it might be easier to go here and pull down actual files. Uh, also, I've done some other videos recently, and here's one of them. And I'll put a link in the show notes to here. You know, convert JSON to Excel and back via OpenPy Excel. So I'll be, I'll be kind of riffing off those ideas. But uh, I, won't be, I won't be focusing too much on creating the Excel files. We'll kind of do a little cut and paste and get it going real quick. And then we'll uh, jump right into the row, the columns and the rows. Um, there's a gist right there. Uh, also, for people who aren't familiar, there's a jsonlint.com where you can post your JSON and, and validate it and make sure it's okay. And this is the JSON we'll be using in this. So I'll just actually cut and paste here. So with that, let me just get something working. So here I am over here. I'll go uh, by, let's see, we're going to call this. What should I call you? Oh, let me just get the JSON going. So by uh, original JSON, I'll place that in here, save it off. Uh, and then over here, I'm just using multiple windows. Uh, if you don't have the JQ tool, it's probably a good idea to install it. It's very nice for validating JSON and different things. So I'll say JQ dot original JSON and it formats it and it confirms the file is good. So fantastic. So next, let me go, um, and we're going to be using this to JSON to make our Excel spreadsheet just for convenience. Uh, in fact, it'll make multiple worksheets is the plan right now. So let me go uh, by create XLS from JSON.py. And we'll go, nah, we'll make it real basic here. User, then environment Python, Python 3. Oops. Python 3, and we'll come down here and I'll do a little cut and paste of a main function here. And I like to get things just barely working and build off of it. So I'll just say print, test, uh, and I'll save that. And I'll come over here, change mod user plus execute to make it ex executable. And let me make sure that I have my test backs. Perfect. Um, oh, also, Let's see. Uh, well, I already assume you have the libraries installed, so I'm not going to go over that. That's in other videos. So here I'll say import open pi XL, import JSON, because we're doing JSON from open pi XL, import workbook, workbook. All right. And from open, oh, that's numbers out. Okay, we're not doing that. Uh, okay, so we'll come down here and we'll say, uh, this is just some I'll say this header dict I was just making I was trying to eh, making a dictionary so like in the first column when I want it to be called month let's see what notes I wrote here second month food third month heating and fourth month, uh, rent. Boom, boom. There we go. And we can reuse that. Uh, doo -doo -doo. We'll go down here. We'll go down here and get our JSON data. We'll say JSON data. Data equals, we'll just make it empty right now. And say with open original dot JSON. as JSON file, JSON data, data, data equals JSON load, JSON file. There we go. And then we'll start making a workbook. We'll say workbook equals workbook. Um, and I'll comment this next section out at first, but what we have, I'll do a little cut and paste here. Because we're going to be making, making multiple worksheets, uh, by default, it makes the first worksheet for you. 
but we don't want that. We want to make our own worksheets based on the data. And what it will do is it will actually make that first worksheet for you. And so you have this extra worksheet you don't need hanging around. So I'll have to go remove this, but for now, I'll comment this out, but we'll, we'll come back and add that. Um, okay, so da, 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 da. So we say four year in JSON data keys. Sheet equals wb dot create, oh, create a sheet. And we'll say title equals the year that we're pulling from that JSON. And then we'll come down here. I'll stop right there. Um, I'm going to add more to that in a second. And I'll come down here. And once that's all popular, well, at this point, it would make a sheet. It'd make the sheets and name them, but there wouldn't be any data in there. So we'll next, we'll save it to an Excel file. And we'll say wb.save um, column width row height dot xlsx. So it should save it to that file. I'll remove this test here. And if I run that, let's see if it crashes. Nope, worked. Okay, so I'll secure copy that over my directory here. Let's see, and that is in open pi xl row. And I'll say, well, all the XLS X files here, I'll pop them over here. Oh, I did home, not home. Wrong server. There we go. And then we open this guy. And it should be blank, but we should have, hopefully, uh, multiple uh, sheets with the year on it. And there we oh, and there we have 2008, 2019, 2020. But again, we have that extra sheet I haven't yet deleted. So perfect. That's so far so good. I'll come back here, wipe that out. So now we'll delete that. And then we'll come down here and say, okay, we're gonna go populate the sheet with the JSON data uh, from that key. And so we'll say, we'll grab that year data and we'll pass it the sheet. There we go. And if I go up here, I'll make a new method. I'll probably just cut and paste this because it's in my other video. Paste, there we go. Okay, so here we'll populate that row. We have the row number, data dictionary, uh, populate sheet. All right, populate the sheet. And we bring that row number in there. Four month in JSON, da 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 da. And we pull up. Oop. This pulls all the data in. I'm not going to go over it in detail because I did in the other video. Save that. Hopefully it didn't break anything. Oh, F -m. Ah, yeah, we didn't do that. Mm. Okay, this is from the other video. We we're doing number formatting, but I'm not doing number formatting in this video, so I'll remove that. And hopefully that will get us there. Good. Let me copy it. And so now, I have data. So there's the data for 2018, 2019, and 2020. Perfect. So now let me go edit some of the data to make it um, take up more space so that it actually doesn't want to fit. Okay, so let's fiddle with the columns quit first. And first let's do an auto size of the columns. So if I go in here into the original JSON and I go in the first one and I just start I'll edit these so they're going to be bigger. Is a month of the year. And here I'll just put a really big number in here. If I save that and I rerun it, pull that file over, now we should notice that our columns aren't, aren't wide enough. So here we say January is a month and the column's not quite that wide. And there we go, that 2.4 e to the 21st. If I click on that, you can see they fill in. But let's fix it so it auto makes it that correct size. So let me go into the code and go up here and we'll say from open pie XL and utils, oh, let's see, dot utils, 
import git column git column letter. That's just a tool that you can convert a, a column uh, number to a letter which it needs for some things. So we have that and then we'll come down here and we'll say right here, that's our, here we're iterating through every single cell. And so as we do that, we can say ws.column. So worksheet, this is the worksheet. So I have the worksheet and I can say column dimensions. Dimensions. And I can say get column letter column. So this is the tool that we're using from there to get the column letter because we want the letter, uh, not the number. Now here the column is actually the the uh, number value. Column and range, yep. So this is the number. So this will say like uh, column two, and this will convert that into a B, and that's what we need to get the dimension of the Bth column. And once we have that, we say dot auto size equals true. And so now every single column that I've added should auto size itself. So if I run this, hopefully we are good on our auto size. I'll secure cap it over, open it up. And there we go. So, hmm. well, we saw, ah, well, I'm not auto sizing the eighth column. That makes sense, it's a good test. So now I can see this column is auto sized. So now we can see it correctly. But because I was starting on the, the second column, in my code, I actually didn't set these columns. So that's a good test. Let me go back and fix that one. Because uh, here we have populate headers. Let's see, we populate the headers. And here we populate the header row. Let's see, for column and range one, blah, 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 blah. right there. Okay, there we go. So we can do the same thing here. I think that should do it because that's one to link to the header deck. Let's see. Populate the header rows. Now that's the header rows, um, which actually would work because it actually goes through every single header row. Ah. But a better way to do it is right here. There we go. So here I'm setting that first column. And here I skip that first column. So here I'll say, get that first column. And since I know I'm the first column, I don't really have to do all that conversion. I can just say A, auto size the eighth column. That'll work, I think. Run it, copy it, open it up. And there we go. We are better, but not quite fully there. Hmm. Don't know why I didn't quote fully populate that. But it did not. But that's the auto size, which apparently is not quite so perfect. Anyway, let me open that up again and see what it's like again. Yeah, we're better, but we're not fully open. Um, there could be many reasons for that. I'm not sure. But anyway, we've done that auto size, which may or may not work in some cases, as I'm seeing here. The next thing is we can actually designate the actual size, more or less. So I'll go down here and I'll say dimensions, get column, and exactly the thing, but rather than auto size, in fact, we'll do it on this one first. Rather than auto size, we'll say uh, width. And then I can set a number. So I can set, you know, 160. It's not actually 160, there's more complexity to that because it, there's a lot of rules. So 160 doesn't actually mean 160, depends on if you're on a Windows machine, a Mac machine, it can get a little twisted. So let me say, run that now. And copy it over, open it up. And there we got 160, which we can see right now is, it's not the pixels, it's this number that's at width 159.29. Um, but it worked. But it's also not perfect because there's some calculation rules in there. So when you say 160, it actually doesn't end up being 160. Sometimes it might. Uh, but again, there's some rules. You have to go tweak that a little bit because it's not. So if I go here and I say, you know, I really want this width, which is 55.43. If I come in here and say, okay, that's what I want, 55.43, it's not going to hit that number. It'll be close. And there's a lot of complex reasons for that. 
I put a link in my show notes to some of that. And there's some there's some stuff in my blog post about it, but not worth my research right now. But it's like complex calculations. There we go. So now this should not be. So it's fifty four point seven one. So it's a little different, a little off. So you got to think about that. I can also come down here and I'll change these guys from auto size, and I will say width uh, equals. Uh, uh, 62. Will we run it? Let me close that. And there we go. So now these have all been resized to near 62. It's not pixels, it's this width number that uh, Excel has. Okay, so there's that. So next, so and of course, you can programmatically define different uh, widths per column. So you can set what you want or what you need to set. Um, with that, let's go on to setting the rows. How do we get the row height different? Okay, row height, similar thing, pretty easy. I'm gonna come down here and do a little test here. So I'll take uh, every odd row and change it somehow. So I'll say if uh, row num mod, mod2 equals zero, then do something. So here I'll just do a quick test. I'll say print row num to make sure I'm thinking correctly. Yep, two, four, two, four. Okay, perfect. So then I'll come down here. And so for those odd rows, I'll say worksheet row dimension. Uh, row num dot height, and I'll set it to some height. So here I'll set it to, I don't know, 32. Or, you know, well, let's, let's just do that. So now I'll run it. Oh, row dimension, what did I spell wrong? Oh, dimensions, there we go. How about plural? Okay, copy it over here, open it up. And there we go. So the first one didn't change. The second one, now I've got a height of, you can see 42. And here I got another one, height of 42. The other one didn't change. But you can see I said 32. So they don't actually interpret exactly. Well, sorry, no, that, that's the pixel, sorry. Height is 31.5, height is 31.5, but I said 32. So you're gonna have to do some tweaking to get it adjusted to exactly how you want. Um, you can't, you just can't nail it. I can't put, if I put 31.5 in here, it might nail it or it might get close. You have to think about that when you're doing whatever you're doing uh, programmatically. But there you go. That's the basics. I don't want to make this video too long, but that's how you use OpenPyXL with Python uh, to create an Excel spreadsheet, but also how you can change the column width and the row height. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Patman Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.